Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you are very welcome to this service of celebration uh, for Trevor Patterson. The service has all been, so, been streamed live, so for those that are joining with us online, you are especially welcome. Uh, my name is Mervyn Jamison. I'm, I'm the rector here, but I'm del delighted to be joined by a previous rector. Uh, not the one on the left, he's quite tall, but, but the one on the right. Robert, thank you for coming along. I know you're a big part of, of the family and, and growing up as well. And uh, I think uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Bell's here somewhere too, Carl's here. And it's lovely to see you here with us as well. It's amazing and a, te and a testament to uh, Trevor, uh, the amount of people that are gathered in here. And he would be impressed getting three of us into robes, wouldn't he, for this service. He'd be even more impressed getting the band, some of the band in the church as well. But it's lovely to see you guys as well uh, here uh, to do the Guard of Honour afterwards. Now, if you don't have an order of service and you do have access uh, to the hymn book, uh, the first hymn we'll sing in a moment is hymn 21. It's the Lord's my shepherd. Let's be still for a moment. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. We brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Indeed, we have come here today to remember before God our dear brother Trevor Patterson to give thanks for his life and to leave him in the keeping of God his creator, redeemer and judge and to commit his body to be buried and to comfort one another in our grief in the hope that is ours through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore we pray that here today we may know all know God's peace and the peace of Christ and the communion with all God's faithful servants. Amen. Now, I want to warn you, as you stand to sing this first hymn, that Trevor was in the choir. And so if you don't sing, we'll make you do it again. <laughs> he would appreciate that. Uh, just a little thing about Sunday morning, Shirley. Um, I, I know why he didn't come to church. Because we were singing one of those hymns he didn't like. <laughs> Jimmy reliably informed me of that. But uh, we're going to stand now and sing our first hymn, the words... We're on the order of service, but also in the hymn book. The Lord's my shepherd. Will you please stand?
turn to Christ to hold our grief. God of all consolation, whose son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend, look with compassion on us, your children, in our loss. Give to our troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which has made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan, for bringing us up prayer and reading. Ryan is the community pastor here in Bali Lesson, so if you do see him, you'll not miss him. And uh, indeed, I, I know, did Trevor ever try to recruit you for badminton? Oh yeah, <laughs> probably many a time. Uh, I'm going to ask if Claire is going to come and speak about her. On behalf of Mum and our family, I would like to thank you all for joining with us today to remember Dad and to celebrate his life. As most of you know, my dad was one of life's great characters, a real gentleman who always had a smile on his face and loved a good laugh. Um, Dad joined Facebook at the grand old age of 70, and when it came to his 71st birthday, he was all disappointed and he said, yes, how come Sam, he's my husband, whose birthday um, is a few weeks ahead of Dad, he said, how come Sam's got over 140 birthday messages and I've only got eight? <laughs> we looked at Dad's Facebook page and said to him, but you're going to meet friends with eight people. And he said, indeed I am not, I have loads of friends. <laughs> and I mean, looking at this congregation today, he was definitely right. Dad knew so many people from all walks of life and backgrounds. It didn't really matter to him where someone was from or what they did. He treated them all equally and would just chat away to them as if he had known them all his life. He was such a sociable person. Mum would say to him, you're never in the house, she always out waking. Um, but he just loved being out and about, talking to people, telling his stories and his infamous jokes. Dad was usually in the company of his best friend of over 50 years, Jimmy. And he very rarely saw one without the other. And we know Jimmy will be feeling Dad's loss as much as, um, as much as we are. Dad had so many interests in his life. Um, having grown up in Drumbo, he followed in his own dad's footsteps and joined ballet lesson bands when he was 11 years of age. He was determined he would get to 70 years service before officially retiring, although I think he had told my mum he would retire at 50 years and again at 60 years. And <laughs> if the truth be told, I didn't think he would ever really have left it because he enjoyed it too much. He was an active member of this church for over 55 years and it was such an important part of his life. Mum and Dad were married here in 1969, having met when they both worked in the factory in Eden Dairy. They spent their married life worshipping here and taking part in church activities. Um, Mervyn had said earlier in the week that Dad was the life and soul of Bally Lesson Church, and he really was. He was involved in so many things over the years, the choir, vestry, badminton club, table tennis. He was a founding member of the church goals club, took part in youth club, 
tried his hand at bell ringing and even did a bit of flower arranging when it came to harvest. He was also the first person to introduce himself to any newcomers who came through the door, greeting them with a firm handshake and a warm smile, making sure everyone who came through the door felt welcomed into the church community. In fact, if there was something happening in the church that involved a cup of coffee, a slice of cake and people, my dad would be there. Dad had a real passion for sport. He was always so fit and active throughout his life. He um, played badminton from when he was a teenager and he um, actually only stopped, very reluctantly stopped playing a few months ago. And I'm sure there are quite a few of us here today who were either taught to play badminton by dad or shouted at by my dad <laughs> um, for not running um, for a shot on court. And I know I can speak for experience. I was, throughout my teenage years, I was his mixed doubles partner and Mum always knew when we'd lost the match and the pair of us would come home not talking to each other. <laughs> um, Dad also loved football. When he was younger, he was a goalkeeper and he still loved watching matches, usually on his iPad with his headphones on so that no one would disturb him. In recent years, he had enjoyed going to Northern Ireland matches with us, um, watching the old amateur league game at Sirocco and returning to Windsor to watch the Blues and the Glen, something he had done with his brother and cousin when he was younger. His biggest passion was Man United, and he had um, really enjoyed going to Old Trafford to see them a couple of times. Um, he loved watching them, although I can see him going over love is probably too strong a term to describe Man United, given their performances in recent years. And I saw him on Friday pass there, um, after Man United had lost on Thursday night, he definitely um, didn't love them. And, Harry Maguire's name was mentioned quite a few times, and <laughs> not in a good way. Dad was also an experienced bowler, and he played both indoor and outdoor bowls. Um, he'd actually played a bowls match on Saturday afternoon, which I'm um, told by Jimmy he won, and um, he'd want me to make sure people knew he actually won his last bowls match. And as a family, we are so grateful that he was still so active and able to enjoy sport right until the end. Even when he had um, major surgery a few years ago, the first words he said to the consultant as it, after his operation were, when can I play bowls again? And the consultant had said to him in six weeks time, and sure enough, in six weeks time, dad was back playing. Last year, he was so proud to be president of Shaftesbury Bowling Club, and even though he had been in hospital, he was determined to go to the president's night as he had arranged the entertainment and had a few new jokes that he wanted to tell everyone. Um, but that was Dad. He had a real positive outlook on life and he never let anything get him down. Even in recent months when he had more health issues, he remained extremely positive and we would always say to him, how are you feeling? And he'd always go, I'm feeling great and put his thumbs up. Um, when he was diagnosed with myeloma just before Christmas, he said he had um, looked it up on the iPad and that was a phrase we heard lots of times. He, I don't know what he was looking up on the iPad, but he was always looking up things on the iPad. And, he said, well, it says I could live for two weeks or 20 years. He said, well, I've got past two weeks, so I must be going to live for another 20 years. Dad lived life to the full and enjoyed every minute of it. He didn't worry about a thing. And anyone who knows Jane or myself will know we, unfortunately, didn't inherit that gene from him. He always would have said, why would I worry when the three of you are doing it for me? Um, Jane and I had a great childhood. My dad's hobbies were our hobbies. He had us at everything from church, badminton, tennis, golf lessons. We even had our own racing pigeons. Um, dad, like his own dad, kept pigeons and had been a member of Valley Lesson Pigeon Club and I think he was hoping we had to carry it on. No, we didn't. Um, Beaver Park Hospital um, played such a huge part in our childhood and in my dad's life. Um, Mum and Dad live in the groins of the hospital and Dad worked there for over 40 years, first as a porter and then as head porter. It was a job that suited him, it allowed him to be active and doing what he liked to do best, which was interacting with people. He always wanted to make patients feel comfortable and cheer them up, especially if some of them were, there, were in for long periods of treatment. He would often collect patients and take them to bowls or bring them along to the church coffee morning. As kids, he used to let Jane and I wean patients along the covered way, which was in the middle of the hospital. He would even let us answer phones on the switchboard, which I'm sure he would get the sack for if he did that now. Um, when he was receiving his own treatment in recent months, he enjoyed seeing some familiar faces from Beaver down at the cancer centre and 
when I left him on Friday afternoon when he's heading down to his appointment, he's going to go down early to see if, any, if he could see any of his friends for a good catch-up. Um, when Dad retired from the hospital, um, Mum and him took on a new job as childminder for their grandson, Alex. Um, Dad loved spending time with him and he was probably the most bought baby in Belfast. Um, Dad would take him out for hours in the pram, so much so that Mum would normally have to go out in the car and try and find him, and he would usually find Dad down the road if he had bumped into someone and was just having a chat. Um, family meant everything um, to my dad. He had lost his own mum when he was 15 and still to this day carried a black and white photograph of his parents, brother and aunties in his wallet. He would have done anything for my mum, and that's I would always say, as long as you're all, all okay, then I am okay too. Mum and Dad would have celebrated their 54th wedding anniversary this year, and were together for over 60 years. They were such a good partnership, and together raised um, an extremely uh, close family. We really loved him so much, and we're so blessed to have him in our lives, and we just miss him so much. I didn't give you a time limit, Claire Sheridan. Just as well. Your dad will be pleased. It was cut the sermon down a wee bit. No, only listen. That was that was beautiful and wonderful just to hear uh, about Trevor and uh, uh, your thoughts. And indeed, I'm sure if I was to let some of you up here to talk about Trevor, we'd be here all day and all night. But the catering team have told me I better have you down there for before four o'clock. I'm sure you won't complain too much about that. But afterwards, we, it's a family's wish that you do join with us in the hall. There is a short committal service in the graveyard here, and then we're down at the hall for some refreshments afterwards. I want to read another piece of scripture. Psalm 121 that, that Ryan had read to us is, was a, was a favourite and was one of those ones I was told I had to read today. Is that right, Shirley? But it's, it's a wonderful psalm, and a psalm that gives us strength. The psalms are sort of split in two between psalms that lament but psalms that also that encourage and give us strength and so that psalm in itself is one which should encourage you that as we look at mountains as we look at the beauty of creation that our strength and our help don't come from that beauty in creation but it comes from the creator of that creation and for those of us that have a faith in christ that's a wonderful assurance so I want to read uh, another passage of scripture, very familiar, from John chapter 14. And, and this is a passage of scripture uh, and the words that Jesus used to prepare his friends and the people that he was closest to for a day in which he would no longer physically be with them. And these are his words. John 14, beginning at verse 1. It says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then we jump down to verse 27 where Jesus says to his friends, and indeed this is a verse for you as his family and indeed friends as well. It says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This passage of scripture, and when we join it with, with Psalm 121, it gives us an assurance of God's help and God's strength and the promise of a life eternal. For those of us who have that Christian faith, it's this time on earth for us is just but a blip on horizon because eternity is eternal and that's where we have that life together. Trevor and I had a few conversations 
And if you know Trevor, Trevor was pretty direct at times, isn't that right, Jimmy? Okay, you even used to discuss my sermons sitting at the back while I was still preaching, which was interesting. But anyway, uh, Trevor was very direct. And, and on a number of occasions, we had lovely talks, and with you, Shirley, about assurance. And you're wondering, what was he talking about? But it was the assurance that we have eternal life, that we are Christians, that if we have Christ in our hearts, that we have that life that comes after. And I know Trevor, like all of us, have our doubts, and we have uh, little blips along the horizon. But for me, when I spoke to Trevor, and, and I asked him a number of questions, I said, do you believe there's a God? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son? Yes. Do you have him in here? And he went, yes. And I would love to ask each one of you, you will all have your own experiences of Trevor. You will all have your own thoughts about Trevor. You will all have laughed at some of his good jokes and cringed at some of his bad ones. But there is no doubt that when I think of Trevor, I can see somebody who I would stick a big stamp on his back and say, Christian, do not pass go until you get to those pearly gates. As I listened to him about being a head porter, I kind of thought he'd be angling for Peter's job when he gets up there. But no doubt he'd be looking for somewhere to put his little iPad stand. Have any of you ever visited Trevor and Shirley? Well, after a while, when you come out, you have a sore throat because you'd be shouting at the pair of them. But also, it's the only house, Shirley, I've seen where you have the iPad on a stand right beside the TV. So it takes quite a, quite a knack to be able to watch both. It's an even better knack when you drink me at half two in the morning from it. I was saving that one till this particular day. I thought it was Trevor, but when somebody wanders at night and then wants to get on the iPad, but you know what? It's wonderful and it's good to laugh. It's good to celebrate. It's good to have that joy of life. And that joy of life comes from these very words that Jesus said to his disciples. Thomas is always branded as being a doubter. But if it wasn't for Thomas, we wouldn't have some of these most profound statements from Christ. A couple of weeks ago, we preached about Thomas. The Sunday after Easter uh, is, is always about Thomas. But I think Thomas was one of the bravest disciples because as I shared with the congregation, he was the one that wasn't in the room hiding. All the rest were hiding in the room whenever Jesus appeared, or else he was just far better at hiding seek than the rest of them. But Thomas was the one who wasn't afraid to ask the question. Trevor wasn't afraid to ask me that question when it came to assurance of faith. And when Thomas asked that question, Jesus quite simply said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I have many, many images of Trevor. When we came here at the start and started a youth club, my youth club volunteers included Trevor and Jimmy. We even got a top to fit Jimmy, which was great, wasn't it? All right, James. He's, he's, he's sort of keeping these things and gathering them up for me. But, um, and, and one of the images I have is, of you, is the pair of you teaching our young people to play badminton. And the patience that you had, not, not Trevor, but the patience that you had with them. But it was just wonderful to see the service that Trevor gave to this church. I would say Trevor was the welcome to this church. And I know many people that probably came here and came in through those doors for the first time. Firstly, you wouldn't have got past Trevor without being welcomed and without a handshake. You wouldn't have got past him. And he would have been the smiling face of this church. We're going to have to find a few more now, Jimmy, aren't we, after, after today? But he was the welcome. And Jesus in himself was someone who welcomed others. And there's a little invite, and, and I know I joke, Trevor, we talked about uh, when they went away with the band and when they went to a few different services, some people would sit outside. And I'm not going to pick on the band because you can pick these out in your lovely uniforms. But there are probably people in this church today that don't normally come and sit in church. Maybe you don't come and sit in church regularly. 
But because of Trevor, you're here today. And you can hear these wonderful words. These words that give us an amazing hope. Trevor has done so much for us as a church. When you heard just, and I know Robert in your time here, so much as well in the different things. But what Trevor did for me, he made me laugh. He gave me joy. In the conversations that we had, or in some of the jokes that he told me that I probably can't tell from the front of the church, but he brought joy. In this place today, as we mourn his passing, I want to introduce you to somebody else who can bring real joy in your life, and that is this very person of Jesus. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. I have no doubt. And I have got it printed here in big print. Assurance of where Trevor is today. And the question that I have for all of us here today is do you know do you know where you're going whenever this life on earth comes to an end I'm going to ask Robert just to come and say a few words and to lead us in prayer thank you Marvin I, I just wanted to take the opportunity uh, to offer my sympathies and prayers to Shirley and the girls today and the wider family. I, I feel your pain and I know your pain and it's my prayer that the Lord will draw beside you and bring you his comfort and his strength. It's great to have good memories and you have terrific memories, but it's also good to know that the Lord is with you. When I came to Belly Lesson, Trevor and I were immediately the greatest buddies. It wasn't because of my good looks or my debonair personality or my great preaching. It was because, and you all know why, I supported Manchester United. Now here's the scenario. I was a Man United supporter. Trevor was a Man United supporter, and the church warden, I can't say it, <laughs> Mr. James Green was a, a little bit more. <laughs> and Trevor and I never missed an opportunity, whether during the service, before it, or after it, uh, to get at Jimmy, especially when Liverpool were playing so poorly. <laughs> Um, one particular morning, Sunday morning, and this is how I remember and will remember Trevor. Trevor came in and he said to me a very serious face uh, about something he had read in the newspaper about one of the Manchester United support uh, players. I'll not tell you the joke, <laughs> it was so bad, but anyway, I still remember it. Um, but he took me in completely. And I said, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's amazing, Trevor. And then he hit the punchline. Well, I couldn't keep my face straight the whole of the service. Uh, every time I looked down there, I had to avert my eyes because Trevor was sitting and he was laughing because he had caught me out. And that must have gone on for weeks. And that's how I remember Trevor. He had just that wonderful personality that wonderful, lovely personality that got on with people. And as Mervyn said, made you laugh and made you smile. Trevor loved Shirley and the girls. Trevor loved sport of all kinds, playing and, and watching. And Trevor loved this place and the God he worshipped here. 
We do give thanks to God today for Trevor. We give thanks for Shirley and the girls and the family. And we leave our dear Trevor in the loving, merciful hands of our caring God. Shall we bow our heads? Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we who are baptized into the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him, that through the grave and gate of death we may come to a joyful resurrection through him who died and rose again for us, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray for those who mourn. Give faith and comfort, O Lord, to all who are bereaved. And especially here today, we remember and pray for Trevor's loving wife, Shirley, his dear daughters, Jane and Claire, son-in-law, Sam, and especially his grandson, Alex. We also pray for his brother Dennis and his family. And we pray for the whole family circle and Trevor's close friends, especially remembering today Jimmy. Strengthen them to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your mercy in the past and waiting for a joyful reunion in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant, Lord, that we who lay to rest our dear brother Trevor in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life may firmly believe and continue in the fellowship and communion of your saints through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life of all who believe in him, and who by his apostle St. Paul has taught us not to grieve as people without hope for those who sleep in him. Raise us from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him as our hope is this our brother does and that at the resurrection on the last day, we may be found an acceptable people to you and receive the kingdom prepared for all who love and fear you. Grant this merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and our redeemer. Amen. And shall we spend in a moment of quiet as we bring our own prayers and thoughts to God. As we remember Trevor today, as that loving husband and father and grandfather and friend, shall we bring our prayers before our God. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life. Until the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. Fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And shall we join together as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Robert, for leading us in those prayers. In just a moment, we are going to stand and sing uh, our closing hymn. And at the end of that hymn, can I ask you just to remain standing? But but it's 627 in the hymn book, if you don't have an order of service, but it's what a friend we have in Jesus. Just uh, on Easter Sunday, uh, we sang one of Trevor's favourite songs. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to sing it to you. You'll be glad to know, but uh, it was up from the grave he arose. Anybody know that? See, nobody wants to put their hands up in case I ask you to sing. But it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful hymn. And uh, the last, or the chorus of it, quite simply, uh, as, we, as we look at it, it says, Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. And because of that, we can claim that assurance of a life eternal. Will you please stand as we don't sing that hymn, but sing what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God.